Brody mailed me his broken carburetor float, so today I'm going to do an entire video on carburetor floats, how to repair them, and how to adjust the fuel level. So regardless of the brand or type of carburetor, inside the fuel bowl they all have a float that controls the level of gas that's available in the carburetor. So a properly working and adjusted float will operate the valve and ensure the correct amount of gasoline goes in the float bowl. If the level's perfect, it'll have the jet submerged so they can draw fuel up into the carburetor. If the level's too low, the jets won't be able to get any fuel. And if the level's too high, it'll just overflow and go out on the ground. So with this example carb, when the float goes up, it turns the gas off. And when the float drops, the gas comes back on. And if the float's broken and doesn't float in the gas, fuel will just continue to flow. And Brody's float is supposed to have two floats and one's broken off. It should look like this. So floats don't have to be broken to fail. They can just be leaking. And when they leak, they'll sink in the fuel and it'll leave the valve open and everything will flood all over the place. These old brass floats they can get little pinholes where they were soldered together so you just need to make sure you empty the fuel out of those and you can just solder those back up. Now the foam floats are a problem because they get old and deteriorated. The foam soaks with gasoline and then they sink causing problems and unfortunately these you just have to replace. On the plastic floats they have a seam where they are molded together and sometimes that can crack or get holes in it but these are cheap and easy to fix. You just fill it with some Nickel Town Customs putty or some epoxy and then reinstall it back in the carb after you checked it in some water. It's important to check and make sure there's no air bubbles. And I'm not sure what Harley Davidson floats are made out of, but they get saturated fairly easily. They don't last a long time. And once you have a good float, like on my sample carburetor here, you need to set the level correctly. Turn it upside down and measure the number of millimeters and make sure that matches what's in the book. Usually it's between the gasket surface and the top of the float. And some companies also have gauges, so you just put that on your carb and make sure that it lines up with the top of the float. And if the float's too high or too low, you just bend the tab and then you can adjust it up and down because the tab actually rests on the needle valve. So for Brody's broken float, I'm not going to just replace the second float on this side that's missing. I'm going to remove the old float and install a brand new set of floats. And always recycle your old brass parts. Perfect. I need to cut this float material down to the correct width of the stock float. That's 15 millimeters. And I need two that are exactly 15 millimeters. Badass. And I always use pure brass float screws and make sure you don't over tighten them sweet ready to test make sure you adjust them to the proper height when you put them in your carb so I'll get this back in the mail to Brody along with five out of five Ichiban Moto stickers so in my next video I'm going to open some of this viewer mail Subscribe for future Ichiban Moto videos. It's also cool if you like them and share them with your friends. I'll see you guys next time.